Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going to make some spring decor and we're going to start with these carrots, although I lost the footage on this. So um, these are already pretty much made. So what I did is these are the little spindles that uh, come from, these actually came from a Jenny Lynn baby bed. And uh, so I just cut them the length that I wanted them. And then I kind of sanded the bottom to make it a little bit, uh, a little bit more pointed. Uh, and then I painted these in the color terracotta. And that's a Dixie Bell color. And then I drilled a hole in the top and then stuck some pieces of greenery that I had cut from some stems. And um, this is some greenery that I've had for a very long time, and I don't even remember where I got it, but I think it is working perfectly for these carrots. So then I'm taking some burlap that I have cut a strip from and then unraveled the edges, and then uh, I'm stamping the word carrots on um, a little tag. Actually, I stamped the carrots 25 cents. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting for the first person to come and ask if these are 25 cents. I think that surely they'll know that they're not, but I just thought that was uh, that would be cute to add to this little tag. And I'm showing you here that after I painted these in the color terracotta, I went over them with some brown wax just to kind of grunge them up some. Then that brown wax will kind of settle down in those little indentions and give it a lot more character and, again, make it look more primitive. So I did it on all of these. And if you had some spindles that were um, a darker color, these were actually that kind of blonde color that a lot of the Jenny Lee and Cribs came in. And so um, I w didn't have anything to distress down to. So I just had to kind of add some depth of color over the top of it instead. And please don't be concerned about my voice. I'm having some congestion. Uh, I haven't been sick at all otherwise. I feel great, uh, but I'm just battling a little bit of congestion. And when I finished with these, I added a tag to my container uh, also and put the actual price of them. Now this next little uh, project, uh, this looks like it's gonna be an egg. This is my pattern, uh, but I'm actually gonna make some little stuffed chicks to go uh, to use as bowl, bowl fillers. So um, we've made several at this point, but I wanted to show on camera how I did this. And um, I actually got brave enough to use the sewing machine on this one. And generally what I would do is either hand sew this. I don't mind hand sewing small projects, but since the sewing machine was quicker, I did that. But I'm just tracing um, to uh, folding my fabric and this is just a little printed fabric, and it's only yellow because uh, I mixed some paint and water and kind of stained it. So you just mix a little bit of paint and mostly water, and then you dip your fabric in it and wring it out and let it dry. And that's why this is wrinkly here, which I don't mind at all. I feel like it adds more to the primitive look. And when I go to stuff it, it's going to get a lot of that out anyway. But I just, I wasn't sure about this fabric because it was a white fabric with like a light gray print on it. And uh, I just feel like it gave this a lot of character and it ended up being a good fabric for these little chicks. Now I did these in all different kinds of fabric. So again, you could hand stitch this if you don't sew. I've had some people say that they don't have a machine or use a machine and I'm right with you on that because uh, if I didn't have my sister, I wouldn't be doing very much of that at all. So uh, before she started helping me, what I always did was either hand stitch it or even glue it together with some hot glue. Now this could be glued um, right sides apart 
and uh, just kind of cut around the edges and fray those edges and leave it that way. This one I'm going to actually turn instead. So um, I just sew a small seam around it and then I take my scissors and clip all around that seam so that when I turn it um, the way it needs to be, it won't have puckers and it will, it will just look a lot neater. That helps if you just kind of um, take your scissors and just kind of cut little slits all the way around it, almost to the seam. You don't want to cut into that seam. Um, and if you're using glue, that is a little bit easier because your glue will almost stop your scissors. So, um, so that helps. But if you're going to sew these, just be real careful. And if you sew, you know you need to be careful uh, when you're trying to clip those seams. So I'm pinning the wrapped sides together here, and then I'm going to take it to the machine and stitch all the way around except leave an opening on that bottom. And I like to leave the bottom open simply because when you do hand stitch it, obviously your hand stitching is not going to be quite as neat as uh, using the machine, so I like to have that hidden on the bottom. And then I'll turn this um, right side out and stuff it with a polyfill and then hand sew that bottom together. And to make the nose, I just take a little piece of trim and kind of fold it into a triangle uh, you don't want to just cut it into a triangle because then you don't have the dimension that you need. But I just kind of fold it into a triangle, if that makes sense. I really don't know any better way to describe it. And then I clip the end so that the end that's going to get glued on is flat. And, uh, and then that makes the nose. And it's very simple. You just kind of have to play with it. Um, and you can leave some of your noses a little bit larger, uh, but I like for these chicks for them to be kind of on the small side. And then to make the eyes, instead of using a permanent marker, I want just a little bit of dimension. So I take some paint that um, is on the thicker side, and you know some of my paints I've had open for a while, and uh, maybe especially on the lid, uh, where it gathers, it's going to be on the thicker side, and I like to just kind of dab a pretty good clump. Uh, you don't want to do this with thinner paint because then it's just going to kind of spread out. But if you have some thick paint, just kind of put a little glop on the end of your small paintbrush and just dab a little dot on. And then I just took some little fringe trim that is... Uh, in the color that I needed and just clipped a little piece off that and glued that to the top. Now you could add wings at this point if you wanted, uh, but I'm not going to do that. The ones that I've seen on Pinterest and I've seen a few different styles, none of them have wings and I think they're just as cute as they can be without them. So I'm just going to add an embellishment instead. And because I want mine to look very primitive, I just took a piece of tea towel that I have torn into a strip. I like to tear them in a strip because then you get that frayed edge. And then I'm just going to glue that around the waist. And this is actually coffee stained. I just t take my fabric and dip it in some leftover coffee and then wring it out and, um, and then uh, let that dry. And now I've just wrapped that around and glued it in the front because I'm going to kind of hide that front. I could have left it in the back, but I'm, I'm adding my tag to the front so it will hide better there. And this is one of the areas that you can use, uh, that you can let your style shine through and just add whatever embellishment that you want. Uh, here I've just taken another strip of that tea towel that I've torn in a much smaller strip 
and tied that around the front and that's where I'll, I'll attach my hang tag. And because this is a very primitive little chick, uh, I want to put a simple tag on it. So I just took a piece of cardstock, antiqued around the edges, and just stamped some little chicks on it. Now, these little stamps, I actually put a chick, uh, a chick and a hen on it. And I have that hen stamp, which I thrifted. No, actually, I think I bought that one on Amazon, and I'll add that in the description. The chick, I'm pretty sure I thrifted, but if I can find that, I'll add that as well. But I just put a little hen and chick there. Those are separate um, stamps. And there's grass underneath, and I know for sure that I thrifted that grass stamp. But you could just kind of hand draw some grass. You could even take some um, some watercolor um pencils or even regular colored pencils and just lightly draw some grass underneath and then do that stamping that might even be prettier and as you can see some of these are shaped like candy corn and that was another one of the patterns that was on pinterest uh, and i don't ever print out any patterns or anything but that's just one that uh, again is just so easy to draw out yourself now here are some eggs that my sister made in decoupage napkins on, and she sewed these, but again, these could be just uh, glued instead, and I just love how these turned out. It's amazing how well you can decoupage on fabric. And my sister has a channel, and she made these on her channel, and I'm gonna include uh, that video in the description if you wanna check out how she made these. So I thrifted this little lamp and I just love the little lamp. My husband was cleaning out an old shed for someone and uh, found this little hanging light. It's like a little mechanic slide, I think. But I decided that since I love uh, primitive and old rusty crusty uh, paired with something a little more uh, a little more pretty, I guess, a little prettier, um, then I, I decided I would make these two go together, and I'm going to use them in my house because I just really like the look of this. So I had thrifted this little lamp, and I knew I could do something with it, but I didn't want to put a shade on it because it's so small. So this little part here, I'm just going to make it look rusty crusty also. And um, it will look kind of like a candle then, uh, like the old rusty candles that you buy for primitive decor. So I'm painting this in the color um, caviar, I think. No, I didn't do this in caviar. I did this in gravel road. That's a dark gray color. And then uh, while it's still wet, I sprinkled cinnamon all over it. Now, you could let the paint dry and paint over it with glue, but I thought, why not? A lot of times when I'm painting something first, while the paint's wet, it just saves that extra step. So I did that and then um, and then shook off what was remaining. The And then once it dried well, then I just brushed over it with a clear coat. And I didn't want to spray this because I didn't want to have to tape off my whole lamp. Uh, it, it was just easier to, to kind of touch it up with the paintbrush. But you want to do that because you don't want any of that uh, rust look coming off. Now, you're going to uh, take away a little bit of the rust look, but it still looks really good once you brush over it with the clear coat. And I was already happy with the finish that was on this, so I'm not going to have to paint it or anything. It's going to go well, just like it is. But as you can see, that really helped this, and you could just have it like this. But again, I'm going to pair it with that um, with that little um, mechanics light cover. Now, what you do on the little light cover is you unscrew it, which opens your opening up just a little bit, and then you screw it as tight as you need it to and I was hoping that it would fit this to do that but it wasn't uh, small enough there still was a tiny bit of space 
So to fix that, I just took a little piece of fabric and uh, cut it in a little strip and wrapped it around that opening and hot glued that on. And then when I went to put my my mechanics light over the top of it and, and screwed it on, it was a real good snug fit. And I almost think that that fabric here, I'm using that little Dollar Tree lace actually, uh, but I almost think that that gave that uh, shade a little bit more grip once I screwed it on. So I think that that's going to make it hold in place really well. And then all I did uh, to finish it off is just to tie a little bow from some vintage lace on the top of that little um, mechanics light sh uh, holder. And again, this will be a look that will go well into my decor at home. So this is going to go home with me. So now for my last project, um, I got these little bunnies at the Dollar Tree last year, and I actually did a video on these. Um, I have already dipped these in coffee water and coffee stained them, and because of that, I've kind of gotten the beads in the little bottom uh, out of whack, so I'm trying to, to um, move it around so it stands right. But uh, you can also just take some of your antiquing ink uh, your distress ink and kind of rub it all over them too and then you don't have to go through that uh, the time of letting these dry but I did a video last year on these and I had uh, I had a couple of these left over so I wanted to do this see here I'm adding some extra distress with my distress ink so you could just uh, not worry about the coffee at all if you wanted um, but I wanted that nose is a little, um, I'm just not real happy with the look of the nose. So I went over it with some distress ink. Now, one thing that you could do that I didn't do here is uh, just take some um, embroidery floss and sew a nose on that way, kind of embroider it on. I just didn't want to go through that. So I, I just added some distress ink to mine. Now, all I want to do, this this is going to be a girl, obviously. So, I just took some fabric and cut it into the shape of a little pocket. And I folded the top over to make that more finished. And, um, and then just glued all around the edges. And uh, I don't need to make a dress for this. All I need to do is create the illusion of a dress. So what I'll do is just take some um, some lace trim. Uh, you can cut it from doilies or you can just use some gathered lace trim that you have. It does need to be gathered for the bottom because I'm just gonna glue it all around the bottom. And then I'll also glue some lace around the neckline. And this is another project that I don't feel the need to use fabric hot glue on because this is something that you're not going to be washing uh, because I'm going to be adding some other little things to it and it's just not something that anyone would put in the wash machine. So save your, your cloth hot glue. It is pricier uh, for projects that you actually need it on. And then I'm just going to shove some little flower uh, pieces from a flower stem 
down into that pocket uh, just to give it some dimension. You could put anything in that pocket that you wanted. And if you're giving this as a gift, uh, then maybe you might want to stick a, a gift card in there or or something like that. Maybe some candy. Uh, but uh, I just thought I would put little flowers in mine. And then I just took a little faux daisy and uh, used my Distress ink to uh, grunge it up just a little bit and then glued that to uh, the front of one of the ears. And for the eyes, I just took a little piece of lace and uh, just kind of, I cut it out, but kind of frayed the edges a little bit and glued that over the top of the eyes and then took a very small black button and glued over the top of that. And that gave it a little bit more uh, of a handmade look. So then I just stamped a little bunny on a little hang tag, and I think I, I got this one on Amazon, so I will add that in the description if I can find it as well. And I just stamped that little bunny on there and tied it around her neck. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.